Hello everyone and welcome to Quick Mad, where medicine is explained quickly and easily. Today we will discuss congenital syphilis, so let's get to it. Syphilis is a bacterial infection caused by treponema pallidum. When discussing congenital syphilis, it is transmitted transplacentally or from mom to baby in utero. Infection can occur at any time during gestation, but it typically occurs as gestation progresses. Infection is most likely to occur in women who have untreated primary and secondary syphilis, more so than women who have latent infection. If you're not sure what these stages mean, please refer to our other video about the stages of syphilis where we cover this in detail. When we discuss congenital syphilis, it's actually split up into two different stages, early congenital syphilis and late congenital syphilis. An early congenital syphilis is arbitrarily defined as infection that occurs at less than two years of age. When infection does occur early on, it can lead to miscarriage or stillbirth, but in those cases in which that does not happen, the majority of babies are actually asymptomatic at birth. Signs and symptoms usually appear by three months of age, and we'll now cover what those are. With congenital syphilis, as with many other torch infections, there can be a wide variety of signs and symptoms, including hepatomegaly and jaundice, generalized lymphadenopathy, hemolytic anemia, and thrombocytopenia. And because these findings are nonspecific, I wouldn't necessarily rely on them to help you reach a particular diagnosis when answering a test question. So let's go over some of the more specific findings that you can rely on, and we'll start with rhinitis or snuffles. And this is where you get inflammation of the nose, which leads to white or bloody discharge. And as with secondary syphilis, another finding that you can find here is the maculopapular rash, which can present on the palms and soles. But this rash can also be bullous at birth, which is where you have fluid-filled lesions. Other specific findings for syphilis are condylomata lata, which are where you get these flat wart-like lesions that present usually in moist areas like the genitals. You can also find these mucus patches, which are usually around the mouth or the anus. And just note, with any of these mucocutaneous findings, they do contain spirochetes and are infectious, so it is important to use contact precautions when examining these lesions. Alright, let's now move to late congenital syphilis, which is defined as findings present in patients that are above 2 years of age. And these findings are usually due to scarring or persistent inflammation from early infection. So let's see what these are. Patients can have particular facial features, including frontal bossing, which is where you have a prominent forehead. They can also have a saddle nose, which is where you have weakening or loss of cartilage in the septum, which leads to a dip, as you can see in this photo here. Some ocular findings include interstitial keratitis, which is where you have inflammation of the cornea, and that can lead to these white spots that you see in the photo here. Patients can also have something called chorioretinitis, which is where you have inflammation of the retinal and the choroid layers, leading to these findings that you see on ophthalmic exam. And just to note, these are just some of the ocular findings patients can present with. Other findings include corneal scarring, as well as cataract formation and optic atrophy. And along with the ocular findings, the ear may also be involved, as patients can develop sensory and neural hearing loss later on in life. And then moving on to the oral pharynx, you can also find things like Hutchinson teeth, which is where you have widely spaced and notched teeth. Patients can also have mulberry molars, which is where you have rounded cusps to the molars that resemble the mulberry fruit. And if you're like me and have no idea what a mulberry is, feel free to Google it because I had to do that as well. And then moving on to skeletal findings, you can also have something called saber shins, which is where you have this anterior bowing of the shins, as you can see here. And this is just a summary table explaining the findings that we just discussed that you can find in late congenital syphilis. And to help remember these things, I like to just kind of move from top to bottom and remember that pretty much every part of the face could be affected by syphilis. So starting with the forehead, moving down to the nose, and then remembering that you have ocular and ear findings as well, and then finally moving down to the mouth, and then further down all the way to the skeletal region where you have the shins involved. And these are just some of the findings that you can expect in both early and late congenital syphilis. There are so many different types of findings, but I try to pick out the ones that are most specific for syphilis so that when presented with this, you can easily identify congenital syphilis. And then look out for a future video on torch infections where we'll discuss some of the other congenital infections and how to differentiate between them. For congenital syphilis as well as the other torch infections, on practice test questions, always look out for a question in which a patient presents late to prenatal care or did not have any prenatal care. There may be some mention of some findings that mom maybe have had, such as enlarged lymph nodes or a rash in the palms and soles, which would indicate more of syphilis in this case, and then findings that the newborn is presenting with, some nonspecific and specific findings that you can use to help reach your diagnosis. 
All right, everyone, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe so that we can keep doing what we're doing. And as always, good luck studying, everyone.